Alright, hello again. Um, welcome back to another video on the Mannequin Paladin project. Um, these first couple of videos are pretty much just recapping everything that I've done in the past um, week or two. I didn't document it as I went, unfortunately, so this is just me catching up. In the last video, I discussed the physics stuff that I did to implement the physics stuff um, programmatically on my own without using the Unity's built-in gravity and drag systems. So, what I want to cover in this video is the animator. So, anybody that's worked with sprite-based things, the, you, you, you attach an animator component, and then through the animator you can um, set states um, in the form of animations. Or through the animator also I believe you can just set um, values of... Um, transform rotation components and things as well in the form of keyframes if you're working with um, models instead of say um, sprites but because I'm doing sprites uh, the first thing I had to do was make um, sprite sheets so the walk sprite has six frames and we all know how that looks well if you watch the last video you do if not, this is what it looks like. I guess just, I, I shouldn't be jumping, but just the walking. Kind of like the way it looks. It, it feels kind of smooth. So that's the walk animation. Then we have the jump sprite sheet. So it starts a very short um, preparation frame, and then the jump frame, and then it immediately goes to this sort of... Um, not jump frame, like a post jump, just kind of soaring through the air. And then after that, it goes to this frame. Uh, and then it quickly changes to this other falling frame. So these two are the falling frames. And you can see that when I jump, it's very quick, jerky almost, and it just does that. The most noticeable bit is just the um third frame here is is this one so as as you're jumping it kind of it it pauses on that frame before it starts to fall and you get into these two frames and the speed is set quickly so that it it will just jump in between them very quickly so very quick animations there Moving on to the idle sprite, of course, you, you were seeing that as I wasn't moving, it just up and down two frames, just cycles in between. And then the attack sprite is simple, it, it's sort of like a fencing lunge, but given the restriction of the 32 by 32 palette, <laughs> oh, excuse me, cold, um, but given the restriction of the 32 by 32 pixel palette that um, I had in my sprite editor that I was using, um, that's what I could do. It, it's not as dramatic. It's sort of a pretty basic short range sort of thing. Not not a huge lunge, but you, you can see me attacking. The attacking animation doesn't feel quite as good, but I mean, it, it still conveys the same thing. So now we get into the animator and the player object has an animator attached if I can select the correct thing so this is the thing that controls it all this is is a state machine so entry is um, on startup and it'll go directly to idle and what you're seeing here is a lot of different states all interconnected by cases or transitions so from idle say you want to go to walk so this transition <clears throat> it has a bit of a blending mode here and the condition it will check is if the walking 
boolean up here in parameters is set to true. If it is, it will move to walk. Now that we're here, if, if we stop walking and we want to go back to idle, same thing except we're going to check if walking is false. So between every state, I mean, you, you're pretty much just checking a condition or a combination of conditions to determine which animation is going to be played. So if I jump, then I'm going to check if the Y velocity is greater than zero. Because I don't have launch pads or anything in this game, that is the only thing that I need to check if you're jumping. There's no other way to gain vertical velocity unless you jump. Okay, so jump to falling, it's the same thing, except it's the opposite. Idle to jump, jump to falling. And remember, jump was just the first three frames of the jumping sprite sheet, as I mentioned earlier, and then falling is the last two. So when that velocity is then less than zero, it'll transition to falling. Now you can go from falling to walking if you are providing left or right input and if you touch the ground it'll go straight to walking however if you touch the ground after falling and you're not providing input then you're gonna go to idle instead so from walk you can go to falling if your velocity just drops so if you just uh, walk off of an edge instead of like jumping or something you'll go to falling and now both idle and walk can transition to attack as well but jump and falling cannot because the attack animation is basic in this case um, if I wanted a jumping or a falling attack then I would need to create a different case with a different animation but seeing as I only have that one animation it makes sense that it would only work when idle or um, walking So, that's that. Um, Takeaway has exit time. If you're working with sprite animations, you never want exit time. Unless it's the attack. And I just realized as I was saying that has exit time is checked because you want the attack animation to finish regardless. Or at least in my case, you do. <coughs> So, however, idle to attack. The idle doesn't have an exit time. It's not going to have to finish the animation before it transitions. If it did, it wouldn't look right. And we will just check exit time on both the idle to attack animation or transition and the walk to attack transition. And we'll see what happens. So if I'm walking and then I attack, it looks like it's straight and not, not doing it. So if I hold it, so I'm clicking. I hope you can hear that. It's only going to run the animation if I happen to click when the idle animation is ending. And it's the same with walking. It's only going to transition if the walking animation is ending as I click. And when we set that back to normal, it works as we want it to. Can't go from jump or falling to attack, so you won't be able to attack in the air. You can kind of do this attack jump, which is totally legal. It, it runs from attack to walk to falling or jump if you attack and jump at pretty much the same time I mean it, there's still gonna be those transition times um, so now that I've covered the unity side of the animation let's cover this this is Piskel now what Piskel is is it is a sprite like an 8-bit sort of sprite editor 
creator that I found on the internet. And what I like about this is it lets you add your frames and it lets you do a basic animation. It's even got um, onion layer or onion skin rather, sorry. And I have it set to tile mode, so let's get, take off tile mode. Make that full. <coughs> So you can view your animation um, at whatever frames per second you want, which is really nice. Onion skin, uh, layers, uh, transform things, um, export, import, if I wanted to, I could, um, that was the wrong button, import, browse. <coughs> Actually, I want Pisco files. So what I'll do here is I'll grab. Oh, uh, what was it? So first of all, I'm going to. Oh, certainly I have. Not the grass terrain. Do I not have it? Do I not have any Pisco files? I guess not, whatever. Um, let's just do grass terrain. That's not going to work. Whatever. Uh, let's browse images then so that we can just do grass terrain.png. Yeah, so we're going to import out a sprite sheet. And each frame is like 32 by 32. So then when we do that. Uh, replace. Yeah, so this, because this is just like a sprite sheet, um, that being uh, ground filler, that being the top level, um, corners on the inside that lead into, like, say, these or these. Um, sometimes useful is the tile mode. So the tile mode's nice because you can see how things line up. Not so nice when you're working on like these edge pieces, but I'm sure there's a way you can test that. Um, but yeah, you can see how things line up. It's pretty nice. <coughs> you can change the opacity of the mask. So higher opacity means that the mask, the overlay, the overlay opacity. So you can kind of see where everything's working. You can enable the grid. Or disable it. Change the thickness of the grid. Change the color of the grid. Change that back to like the default. Um, change the background colors, opacities, maximum FPS, stuff like that. So I've, I've found Pisco to be useful. It, it saves the colors that you're using in the color palette. So that's really nice. Um, so, so far, this is what I've used to do all of my um, sprite editors. And I may or may not continue to use this, but if I figure out a way to you save Photoshop well at least for sprite sheets then I will do that I'm, I'm sure it can't be too hard I just I've started with this and I'm not going to quit it Piscal, it it's a it's a good application if you're making 32 by 32 uh, sprites whether that be for the walking animations which I did build those in Pisco as well or if you're building sprite sheets for like terrain or background or whatever <coughs> pretty much anything you need tiles for I would say this is a good program to start if you're kind of going for a blocky sort of an 8-bit style sort of um, application and for the most part I'd say that's what I've got to say about this um, now this video is over, but just like the last one at the end, I'm going to discuss some things. So, um, first off, Piskel, 
The download link is going to be linked in the description below this video. Um, so is the GitHub link to the Mannequin Paladin project. So anybody, if you're watching this, you can go check out that repository, you can download it, you can open up the Unity project file. I'm running 2017.2.0f3. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and you can play with it, you can modify it, you can improve on it, you can um, uh, look through it and tell me what I did wrong. I don't know, it's up to you. But um, that's an option. That GitHub's there. And also the Discord server, the Recursive Roost, I will link that in the description as well. Um, there we have a small growing community of uh, gamers, uh, but uh, like artists, uh, YouTubers, um, small time sort of stuff. Everybody's um, there for a reason, whether it be community or playing games together. Um, some like to share videos, memes, um, any any form of media, um, as well as um, programming and computer building. We have um, quite a few people that are knowledgeable in software development and computer building. And if you have questions or want to get started in computer building or um, software development in any way, if you want to just like start programming, um, one user in particular does a, a Java class. He makes videos for teaching beginner Java uh, programming which is really nice, and if you have questions about Unity, if you want to get started on that, you can come in. Um, if you're a professional at Unity and want to help out, um, I just started a couple of months ago in Unity development, so I could, I could always use more people to talk to about all of this, so feel free to stop by the Discord server and carve out your own little, your own little niche.